pastor for this opportunity and that he uh, he trust you know he trust us enough to say hey you know, you, you do this and, uh, and uh, give me the encouragement to do it too. And uh, so praise God. Let's pray, church. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. Glory. Father, we thank you for this evening, for this body of believers, Father God. These people of yours, Father God, they come hungry, Father God. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you would just use me, Lord. I empty myself out, Father God, and I ask the Holy Spirit right now to, who dwells richly and deeply in me, Father God, to take over and take control here in this service. And, Father God, that the word would go out in all boldness and in power and in authority, Father God, and, and that it would bless the people here, Father God, and they won't leave the same way they came, Father God, that they'll be enlightened by the word of God. And, Father, that they'll be able to to uh, uh, apply that word of God into their lives, Father God, so that they live a powerful life in you. In Christ's name we pray. Yes. Amen. Praise Amen. God. You can be seated. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. The title of my message is, if you like titles, it's called Rub It In His Face. All right. So, so rub it in his face. Sounds a little Bronxy, You know, I'm from the Bronx. You know, I'm born and raised in the Bronx, and so, you know, and, and we had our own ministry at one time, and, you know, I'm a little rough on the edges. Maybe, you know, that might explain some things, <laughs> why we didn't excel as much as we should have. But, uh, um, but praise God, you know, uh, uh, God used me anyway, so, uh, um, so uh, don't be moved by the title, I think, you know. So I want to start off with a, a, a quote from from a, a pastor, and uh, Pastor Joseph Prince, you might be familiar with who he is. He said, my friend, the more you realize who you are in Christ, the more you will walk the way God sees you. A new creation, a new creation with his authority, power, and overcoming spirit. Amen. All right? Couldn't read that. All right. So, I mean, I, th that's a powerful, powerful uh, revelation. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a couple of Thursdays ago, Pastor Dennis did an awesome message with the chair there, you know, about sitting and taking your authority. And I kind of want to glean off of that a little bit and, and kind of build on that. So, uh, uh, in Psalm, the scripture that I want to focus in on is Psalm 118. Verses 10 to 14. Uh -huh. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. It says, Though hostile nations surround me, I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. Amen. Yes, they surrounded and attacked me, but I, but I destroyed them with the authority of the Lord. I just love Psalms and just the way he just starts to build this crescendo, this crescendo, and, 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 and he goes, they swarmed around me like bees. They blazed against me like crackling fire, but I destroyed them with the authority of the Lord. My, my enemies did their best to kill me, but the Lord rescued me the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has given me the victory. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God, God. You know, David was a man after God's own heart. And, you know, that's the way we should be, right? That's what I would try to model myself after. I want, I want to model myself after somebody who, who, who has a desire to, to, to grow spiritually. There's only... There's only three things that God's interested in, really. I mean, if you read the, the Word of God in its context, the only, thing, only three things God is interested in is, one, he's interested in you getting born again. Mm -hmm. He wants to get you saved. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Number two, the only thing that God is really concerned about, the second thing, is that he wants you to get filled with the Holy Spirit yeah. with the evidence of speaking in another tongue. Let me tell you, that's why we're here in this church, Amen. all right? And number three, also for number three, 
is the third thing that God's interested in is that we grow spiritually. That's it. That's, that's the cusp of the gospel message from beginning to end. Is, 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 is God, it's all about getting the people. Come on, think about it. When Israel, or Israel struggled, they struggled. God, I mean, come on. These people, they, they had a real relationship with God. I mean, God wanted to dwell with them. Yeah. He said, yeah. He said, come on. And they all gathered around and they all started shaking in their boots. Instead, they said, well, you go, Moses, and, and we'll do whatever you tell, me, tell us to do. But boy, did that turn out to be a big farce, right? He, they, they complained at every turn. Yeah. <laughs> there was no personal commitment. There was no personal desire for them to grow up spiritually. That's right. They wanted to stay where they were. They wanted to, to, to and, and I love when they used to do this. They used to tell them, hey, oh, yeah, we want to go back to Egypt. There were slaves in Egypt. Yeah. They were in bondage in Egypt. They work like dogs in Egypt. And now here they are, free as a bird. And all they had to do was listen to what Moses had to say. But they couldn't even do that right. <laughs> Praise God. So, yeah, I want to really break this down, this scripture. Uh, and and uh, I want to start with uh, that word authority. You see it comes up, right? How many times? Three times, right? Authority, 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 mm-hmm. Right? And so there's something about authority that God wants, wants us to understand. Amen? So if you go to the Strong's uh, Bible Dictionary, and I'm just going to go and piece this together for you. And it's the, it's the, Greek, it's the, uh, the Greek word, exosia, is that word authority. And, and what it means is in the sense of ability... Privilege, wow, mm-hmm. right? Privilege, force, and, and, you know, when you're reading the Strong's, it says subject in parentheses, and then it says force. You know what that means? That means anything that comes against you, you can force your authority on that problem, that situation, that person, that thing, right. that demon. Come on now. I mean, this is... This is this is it, man. This is the power, the power to step upon scorpions and demons and every lowly thing that the devil could throw at you, man. I'm telling you, this is powerful stuff. Again, the Strong's definition, capacity. So now if you read the scripture, it says, through the hostile, na- the hostile nations surround me, I destroy them all, right, with the capacity of the power of the Lord that's inside of me. You know, some people, they treat the Holy Spirit like he's Santa Claus. Yeah. Yeah. Is he real or is he not real? Come on, Come on now. I mean, we got, to, we got to get this straight. You know, like Pastor says, it's going to get messy if we don't. You know, I love when he says that. I mean, I, that's like my favorite thing I say at home now. I go home and I go, honey, this is going to get messy. And she goes, huh? And she goes, what are you talking about? And I go, oh, God, I'm being like Pastor again. I'm just imitating my leader, you know, and that's what we need to do. You know, uh, uh, so so anyway, getting back to this this definition in the Strong's, uh, uh, another one is is competency, right? So so I destroy them all with the competency of the Lord. Wow, wow that's powerful. You know, that's where we need to get to. You know, we want to we want to get you know instead of living our lives marginally in this world. We have an opportunity to live at the capacity of the Godhead. And people look at you like you're crazy. Brother Steve, you're crazy. No, there's no way I could be like that. Only Jesus could be that way. Right? Right? We we, we marginalize it and we we play it down because of our shortcomings, because of our our flesh desires to do what we want to do instead of doing what God wants us to do. Uh Amen? Mm. I'm just warming up. <sighs> I told you, I was a little nervous. But you know what? The Holy Spirit is it. The Holy Spirit is never nervous. Praise God. Praise God. Now, another word that it defines, this is all in one word, authority. See, I, I, I come from, the, uh, the, uh, uh, from the, the, the point of view or the perspective that, that, you know, you hear a lot of people preach the word and then they 
bam, bam, bam. They give you like scripture after scripture after scripture. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I believe that scripture is so action packed, mm -hmm. you know, that, that it's an injustice to just gloss by scripture. You know, our little devotional readings that we do, come on, think about it. You know, you're, you're half asleep anyway when you first get up. I know I'm not a morning person and I gotta, you know, I gotta have one or two cups of coffee before I get rolling, you know, and then I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell on myself. And if I say anything negative, I'm talking about me, all right? So don't, don't, don't ever take anything personal that I say. And uh, so, but, uh, you know, you know, we, we do God an injustice. I mean, I mean, if we, we, like Smith Wigglesworth uh, used to say, you know, he says, you know, you know, we, we give our bodies, our flesh, three square meals a day. But, but, you know, the, the spirit, we give it 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Or if you're retired, maybe you're doing it in an hour. Maybe you're two in two hours. Hey, praise God. That's great. But you're not going to stay in the Word all day long, you know, and, and, and do in-depth Bible study. A lot of people don't even know how to do that, you know. And, and I thank God for what Raymond has sown into my life, you know, my, the, the, the school that we went to. And uh, it's, it's been such a blessing and, and just eye-opening and, and just so much detail in the Word of God here. Uh, did I say freedom? Freedom. It says, I destroyed them all with the freedom of the Lord. Freedom. Whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. You're, you're free to be an agent for God. Wow. Wow. God's chosen you. Yes, even this little one here, he's chosen him to be a free agent of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, 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 Another word is, is, is uh, ma mas mastery, mas mastery, meaning like as to master something. So he also defeats them by not, you know, that word authority means mastery, meaning, meaning that God will help you to master that problem. Now, I, I remember so many times, man, I, I, I was trying to figure some stuff out, and I, I, some mechanical stuff. And I couldn't, couldn't figure it out. And then the Lord, you know, I just took a pause and I said, Lord, I need help with this. And the Lord showed me what to do. I forget what it was, but he showed me what to do. And I, I went in and I told my wife, I said, man, the Lord just told me how to fix this. And, 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 she, and, and it's the real deal, man. I mean, listen, we, don't, we have a God who's powerful. He's, he, he is all powerful. And he, he knows the beginning from the end, the start from the finish. He knows how you're going to live your life from beginning to end. And he knows how he could use you. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. If anybody knows, it's him. Amen. Even more, my wife might know me in one aspect, but God knows me in a different aspect. Amen. So, I mean, you know, I love my wife. And, you know, when she starts talking to me and telling me stuff, and I need stuff that I need to do. You know, sometimes I rebel a little, and, and, and I don't listen. And, uh, you know, but, but praise God. God's, God's fine-tuning me in that area. Praise God. Anyway, this is not a marriage seminar, is it? No, okay. Praise God. Amen. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, God saw it fit. He saw it fit to endure, endure, endure us with authority. And, and, and then I like what the, the, uh, the end of the strong says, Delegated influence. Wow, say that with me. Delegated influence. Say it again. Delegate influence. Man, that's what God has done with us. That's what he's doing with the whole body of Christ. You know, uh, you know, it may not seem like it. I mean, as much as, you know, we get to complaining in the body of Christ, and we shouldn't do that, right? So, but, you know, that's the flesh, you know, because you see something that's not right. Right away, you want to play the Holy Spirit. And, and you, you, you want to bring it out. And, and nowhere in the Bible does it say for you to do that. All right? So, uh, but, uh, you know, it's delegated influence. And let me tell you, it's an honor and a privilege to be in that position. There's no other religion in this world that delegates the power of God to you. That's right. Amen. Wow. Think about that. Not not Buddha. No. no. Allah got nothing. No. He's still in the grave. The bones are still there. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing. So I got my little tape measure here. Let me just, I want to measure this right here. That's 20 inches right there. Now I got to measure this thing here because, you know, I think this thing's going to break one day as many times as Pastor and Dennis, Pastor Dennis and, and Pastor slam on this thing. And, and, you know, so that was 18, Come on, you know. And so, you know, I can measure a lot of different things here, you know, from different lengths. I could go here like this, like this. That's 68 approximately. All right. Praise God. You know, uh, now turn with me to Ephesians 1, 19 to 21. And I'm going to read this in the Amplified. Ephesians 1, 19 to 21. And so, and so that you know, you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power and authority, his power, which is the word authority, in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. <laughs> this tape measure is limited. What does it say there? It says, what is 25 it? Feet. 25 feet. Mm -hmm. This thing can only go 25 feet. And we can only live our lives to a certain extent in the flesh. We can't, we, you can't? We're limited. We're limited. We're empty. We're, you know, we, <laughs> and when I got saved, man, I was like, Lord, I said, I got nothing. And, and we, you know, we got nothing. And that's the truth. We bring nothing to the table when you come to Christ. And then when Christ gets a hold of you, oh my, and he starts to move, and he starts to, yeah, 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 and he starts dealing with your mind, and, and he starts, and, and you know, things are just flashing. And, I mean, I, know, I don't know how it was for you, but for me, it was like, wow, 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 I want that, I want that. I started reading the word, I want that, I want to do that, I want to be able to do that. I want to cast out demons. I want to lay my hands on people and see them healed. Yes, Lord. I want my son to talk and I lay hands on him. Yes. Praise God. Yes, Verse 20, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. For, whew, Far above, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in, the wor and in this world, but also in the age and the world which is to come. Amen. We are our father's children. He put us here for a reason. Remember that day when you woke up and you said, man, it's got to be more to life than this. Come on now. We've all been there, right? I mean, we, I mean, I'm not the only one, you know? So, uh, and God just took me and twisted me all up, and he did his thing. He put his authority on me. He gave me his Holy Spirit. He gave me power to do this. He gave me power far above power. I want some far above power. I don't want no barely get by street power. Right. We got that in the world. Uh -huh. We don't need that. No, you're called to a higher calling. Amen. You're called to be better than that. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I had breakfast with Pastor on Tuesday, uh, and, and, and man, what a humble man. Yeah. And man, let me tell you, he's an encourager to the 19th degree. I mean, uh, pff, the highest level. Amen. I mean, the brother is a brother like no other. Hey, that rhymes. Wow. Praise <laughs> God. So, <laughs> that's not even in my notes. So, <laughs> so, but, you know, there's just so many things that I think about. And when Pastor Dennis was preaching about that chair there, you know, that chair, there's things that are going to try to get us up off that chair. You know, there's situations that are going to come that's going to snatch you out of that place. It wants to take you out of that place. 
so that you can't practice your authority, so, you can't, so, that, so that you can't have that influence that you need to infer on people who don't know Jesus. He wants to render the church powerless. That's what he wants to do. Uh, I mean, you know, they, he's trying to kill us. I mean, just like David. David was in a natural circumstance, but we're taking it and we're putting it into a spiritual, spiritual circumstance. You know, David's life was on the line. He was stressed out about this. But you know what? He knew his God. This is the sheep boy who prayed in the, in, in the meadow with the sheep as he cleaned their dirty ears and their nostrils and their noses. You know, that was like the, being the janitor in the school system or something. You know what I'm saying? That was the job he had. And, and, and when the prophet came to anoint the next king, he couldn't find any one of Jesse's sons that was at home that qualified for the job because none of them knew how to get in the presence of the Lord to get on his knees and pray and have a relationship with God like no other. The brother... The brother knew his, his Savior. He knew God. Yeah. And, he, and Jesus hadn't even come yet, and he already knew. Yeah. He, he grew up to be a mighty man of valor. Yeah. The greatest king probably in, 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 in Israel. Giant killer. Yeah. Come on now. Who's got some giants in their life there? Come on. There's been some giants that have raised their ugly heads in my life, boy, let me tell you. God, with the authority of the Lord, I destroyed them all. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Now, I won't let you sleep through my sermon, all right? So, <laughs> anyway, when I was thinking about this thing about authority, because uh, uh, I was already fired up, Pastor Dennis did a great job. He fired me up. I was like, wow, that's, that's good. That's good stuff. You know, that's, that's what you got to always remember. And I'll tell you, 2016 was a bad year for me. I lost my mother. I lost my friend. I lost a lot of things. I lost the ministry. And uh, it was a tough year. And, and God, and, and the enemy was on the move, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm not going to lie to you. I was, I, was, I was this close, this close to walking away from God. But thank God for a loving wife. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, she, yeah. she's so good, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I just get emotional. I don't mean to get emotional, but she's a good woman. And, and, and she, you know, the only, one I let, uh, the only one I let play the Holy Spirit in my life. And she had a word. And uh, praise God, we, we got through it. With the authority of the Lord. Oh, yeah. With the authority. That's a good thing. That's a good thing about being married. You know, two are better than one, the Bible says. And if you're not married, that's no big deal either because God is your partner. All right? So uh, uh, no condemnation, you know. God, God, God will get you there. God will get you what you need. Amen? So now I was thinking about this authority thing, and, and, and recently we went, we came back from South Carolina, and uh, my... Uh, we were, we were going to go visit my nephew, and he's, he's, in the, um, he's in the Air Force. So we went to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. And, you know, me being from the Bronx and such, and, and uh, I get nervous around people of authority sometimes, you know, police officers and, and uh, the guy sitting at the gate. And this guy's at the gate, and he looks good from a distance. But when you get close... You don't want to mess with that guy. That guy he, yeah, I got closer, and we got closer, and, and the guy, he's got his nice green beret, and, you know, he's got his red beret on, he's got his, his fatigues, and, uh, and, and you knew once you got up close that that brother was prepared for battle. No joke. No joke. Real battle. I mean, combat. I mean, this was serious stuff. He had a, he had a, and then I called my nephew and I said, hey, what, what's the equipment you guys use over there and blah, blah, blah. And I said, if you could tell me, because you know, I don't know if it's military secrets or whatever. You know, I didn't want him to get in trouble. You know, the phone could be tapped by the government. You never know. So, <laughs> so but he said, he said, uh, uh, he said on the less lethal side, the primary weapons consisted of a metal baton, pepper spray, and or a taser, right? 
So I, I don't know. I got hit with a with a with a with a, with a stick, uh, you know, that you played, uh, you know, stick ball with. Well, you know, I, I couldn't imagine getting hit with a metal baton. You know, that's got to leave some serious damage. So I was like, wow, that's that's the less lethal side. That's a, it's, it's pretty lethal for me. But anyway, and, and uh, <laughs> so uh, and then he said on the more deadly side, the secondary weapons consisted of a, a rifle or a shotgun, depending on the needs of the assigned post. He said they usually the usual sidearm was a, a SIG 320 or an M16 pistol. Now I, I I looked these up online and I was looking, I was like, man, I said that's that's a weapon. You know, it's like 17 bullets, extended chamber, I mean, I mean all these things, you know. Uh, and then he said for the for the uh, rifle, it was usually an M14 or a shotgun, which would be a Remington 870. I know what a Remington shotgun is. I mean, I mean those things were they got a clip on it and the whole nine yards, and and you knew that this was like as you saw this, as you saw him. I mean, I was, I was like, okay, don't say anything wrong, Steve. I said, you know, I'm thinking to myself. I said because uh, this guy, he looks, he looks serious, and you know they don't smile either. You know, they, this is all business. When you come up to that gate, this is about business, right? And uh, had grenades on, and he must have had like 20 clips stuffed in everywhere. Man. I mean, all these machine gun clips, and I'm like, wow. I said, this guy's something else. And uh, uh, but you know, you know, there's really when you think about all the stuff that he had on. I mean, it's no comparison. A big armored truck could come fly, flying through there, and you know, unless he's got a bazooka back there. I don't know, maybe in the booth they got a bazooka or something, you know, but uh, he, he didn't, you know, there's, there's nothing that could stop him, but yet he puts up his hand and he goes like this, and the trucks, they stop, and they give everybody complies. Oh my, that's what the authority of God, that's what he wants, that we exercise that delegated authority in a way that people were going to be amazed. They're going to say, who do you think you are? They said it to Jesus. They said, who do you think you are? He says, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I'm not going to tell you. You answer this question first. Was John of God or was he not? And, 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 and they said, oh, was, was, and they, oh, we've been, and they left. They left. They didn't, want to, they didn't want to confront that because, you know, his authority was from God. It was clear. You know, you don't see people get, healed like that and, and and just the people were thronging to him he had he had a ministry man that was like whoo you know and so anyway god wants that authority he wants us to have that same authority remember we said authority is delegated power right and then but the value of that authority depends on the force behind it so my, my nephew's guard over there at Seymour, you know, he, you know, his authority didn't come out of a Cracker Jacks box. You know, he didn't, he, he didn't get a, he didn't buy like a, a case of Cracker Jack box looking for authority, you know, memo from God or, you know, no, it's in the word. It's in the word. It's in the word of God. It's in the spirit of God. It comes with the Holy Spirit, that whole package, man. It's a package deal. You know, and, and, and so we have to remember that, that God is, is our authority. You know, he had the whole Air Force base was his authority. Yeah. The United States Air Force, same thing with a police officer. I think Brother Hagan uses a, 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 an analogy. And the analogy, he talks about the police, the policeman. He puts his hand out and the traffic stops. Now, you go try to do that. It ain't going to work. People are going to plow you over because you have no authority. You don't, you don't got the suit on. You don't got the sidearm. You know, people don't see the authority. You don't have the badge. The badge is not on you. So here's what we got to do, man. We got to print out some Christ badges or something, man. And just give it out to all the believers. Say, hey, you're, you're authorized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're authorized in Jesus' name. Praise God. So God gave power. I go, we're going to go to Acts uh, 19, 11 to 20, and, and hopefully I'm going to get through this. I don't know what time it is. 
Let's take a look. Okay. All right, give me a few more minutes and then we'll finish this up. God gave Paul, Acts 19, 11 to 20. God gave Paul the power to perform, again, that's the word authority, to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. A group of Jews a group of Jews were traveling from town to town casting out evil spirits. They tried to use this, the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantations saying, I command you in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches to come out. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I, there's going to be an eye awakening here for these folks. Verse 14, seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but who are you? Amen. Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence, with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. How embarrassing. The story of what happened spread quickly all through. And here, here it is. Verse 17. And further down, listen, the story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus to Greeks and Jews alike. A solemn fear descended on the city, and the name of the Lord was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at, the pub, at, a, at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. That's a revival, folks. That's a revival. Several million dollars worth of books. How many people do you think that was? That had to be the whole country there, right? Wow. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect or an authoritative effect, yeah. right? We come empty to the Lord, man. That's what we got to do. You got to empty yourself out. You got to you're spiritually bankrupt anyway. Come to grips with it. Don't think you're some spiritual giant. I don't care how long you've been in the Word. It don't matter how long you've been in the Word. It don't matter. Just stay there and keep growing and keep growing. And can, you know, you never grow full. You, this, you know, in Christianity, you know, this young fellow, he's going to grow up and he'll be like bigger than his dad probably, you know, and he'll be all grown up. But you know what? We'll never be grown up as Christians. You're, not, you're never going to get, you're never, I'm, and I'm not saying this to discourage you, but I'm saying this so that you understand and you stay humble before the Lord and, and you stay focused on what you need to do for yourself, where you need to be. Amen? I mean, that's the most important thing. You know, spiritual growth, spiritual growth. You keep growing, you keep growing, you keep growing. I remember I was listening to one preacher man. He said, oh man, he said, he said, he said, even if you fight the devil and you, and you lose, at least fall down forward so you take up ground. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> there was another, Brother Hagin tells another story. He tells another story. Brother Hagin says, he said, he, he went to this church to minister, and the pastor said, he said, Brother Hagin, he said, he said, we got the devil on the run. And Pastor Hagin goes, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, Brother Hagin goes, oh, yeah, that's good. And he says, yeah, the only problem is the devil's chasing me and I'm a running. And so, so, you know, so that's not exercising your authority. If you talk more about the devil every day, you got to watch what you say. Right. If you talking about the devil more than you're talking about God, oh, shame on you. I mean, you know, we got to correct that. And sometimes it's just a little, it's just a little correction. It's like navigating a ship, right? You know, if you move, if you're heading for Bermuda and, you know, you don't set the, 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 the destination right, you know, if you're only off by a half a degree, you're going to miss the whole island by the time you get there because you're, you know, you're steadily going on an angle, you know, and you just don't realize it. Praise God. So, but that's where we got to be. My old self, Galatians 2.20, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And don't feel bad about that. 
Don't feel bad about that. Why? Why, Brother Steve? Why? Why? Well, many of the patriots missed it. <laughs> We're all in the same boat together, man. They all missed it. You go to Abraham. He had to be put to sleep in order for God to complete the covenant with him. You know, he told him to cut up the, the, the offering, and, and he's busy chasing vultures. God finally got tired of it. He put him to sleep. He said, go to sleep. Boom, I'll take care of this. And then he went, doom, doom, doom. God did his thing, and boom, there it was. The covenant was done. Yeah. Wow. Not just him. How about Moses? He ran away from the things of God. He tried to do it in his own strength. He killed an Egyptian, and then he got caught. They knew he did it. He runs to the other side of the island. 40, miles, 40 years later, he comes back with his... With his uh, is Aaron, he comes back with Aaron, you know, you know, uh, Moses, you know, and then he missed it again. You know, here he is. He's the guy. He's the guy. He's going to go into the promised land. God talked to him. God spoke to him. He said, you're going to go, go into this land full of milk and honey. You're going to grab this, you're going to, you're going to encamp this land. You're going to take it over. It's all yours. God said, speak to the rock and make it bring water. But instead he hit the rock. Don't disqualify yourself from this authority that God has given us. Don't. Don't. And it's easy to do. You know, we get excited. We get in the flesh. We're, boom, you know, and he knew that if he hit the rock, it was going to bring water because that's what he did the first time. You see, this is this what I'm talking about. Every time we do something in the spirit realm, God might handle it one way. Don't always assume that God's going to do it the the same way the next time. That's a little wisdom from your brother Steve, or from the Bible, really. So Moses struck the rock. Aaron, Aaron's son, they lit, un, un, uh, you know, unauthorized fire. I can go on and on, but I won't. So you guys can read that for yourselves. If you need the notes, I'll give it to you. But, you know, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, and I think I'm going to try to end it here. Ephesians 6, 8, uh, 10, 8, 10 to 18. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Now, this is, this is the part that I want to join in with, with uh, what Pastor Dennis did. He had the guy sitting in there. Well, he, had, he said, you got to sit in that authority seat, right? He says, the final word, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mighty, of his mighty power. Wow, that's a double mighty because mighty means power, and power means mighty. So I, I love when the Bible does that. It gives you a, you know, a double, double portion, you know. Yeah. Grace, grace, more grace, you know, things like that. He says, put on all the God's armor so that you will be able to stand against, stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. You know, verse 10, first off, be strong in the Lord. Uh, Pastor Rick Renner did a teaching, and he said, that's a snapshot of the king with his foot on the neck of the enemy. In victory. That's what that is. I don't know if you ever read his book, Just to Kill, but man, that's a great book. It says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers, authorities, the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle... You will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, body armor of God's righteousness. Amen. And when you think about the Roman soldiers, you know, when, when, he says, when he says stand your ground, the Roman soldiers, they had, they had these boots and they had like four-inch cliques on them. So when they went to battle, they would step into the ground and their shield was their whole body length and they would just boom. And when, the, and when the forces would come to them, they would just lean over. And the guys would go flying behind them, and the guys behind them would, sh -sh, you know, sh -sh -sh, chop them into pieces. So, so, and it made sure that there was no retreat. Oh, my. If you have the authority of God, there's no retreating. There's no turning back. No, 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 no. And, you know, it all has to do with us realizing that we have it. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. 
You know, the Word of God's not complicated, man. I took the Word of God once and I, 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 I put it in Microsoft Word. I copied like one section of the Bible that when Jesus was talking, I copied it. And, you know, there's a grammar check in there. And it tells you the grade level that you're writing at. You know, I used to use it to make sure my papers were at the right level in college. And uh, it said it came back as a fifth grade reading level. Wow. 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 <laughs> it's not complicated. This young fella here, what's your son's name? What's your name? What's your name? Eli. Eli. Nikolai. Nikolai right here. Nikolai. He's got the power. He's got the authority, you know. You know, God is, is you know, God is just so simple, you know. It's, it's, it's written at his grade level. He can read it and read it for himself and take a hold of it. You know, when you read in the gospel and love your enemies, you know, as yourself, well, you know what? That's pretty simple, yeah. right? Even though your flesh hates it, you go, oh, you mean I got to love that person? Oh, no. Oh, no. Get out of here. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to read Psalm 118. And this is where I get my message title, Rub It In His Face. Psalm 118. Starting in verse 10. Hemmed in by barbarians in God's name, I rub their faces in the dirt. Hemmed in and with no way out, in God's name, I rub their faces in the dirt. <laughs> I like the way it's going, right? Like swarming bees, like wild prairie fire, they hem me in. In God's name, I rub their faces in the dirt. I was right on the Cliff edge, ready to fall, when God grabbed me and held me. God's my strength. He's also my song, and now he is my salvation. Amen. And I just want to close with this one story, and that's it. Uh, growing up, I said, I, you know, I grew up in the Bronx, and we used to be at 180th Street and Prospect Avenue, and that was like a battle zone. And, uh, you know, my family wasn't rich. You know, we came from meager means. You know, I'm not going to say poor. You know, not that. We were poor, but we weren't poor. You know, that's some people, <laughs> that's some people say that. Well, you say poor, that means you're really, really poor. You ain't got nothing. So, but, you know, we, my, my, my dad was a hustler, you know, and he, he was trying to make things happen. And, uh, but one day, we, it was snowing. It was heavy snow. Uh, it was like one of those, you know, it, it barely snows now. But back in the day, man, we used to get like pfft, big snowstorms. You remember that? And, uh, and um, me and my brother were coming from the bodega, and these two guys, they start to chase us and throwing snowballs at us. And we're running. You know, I'm like, running, we're, we're headed home. We're running home, man, because these guys are chasing us. My brother grabbed me. He goes like this. He grabs me. He goes, he goes you take the short one, I'll take the big one. And now, I was only nine years old. This was the first time, first time that I got into a fight, all right? And, and let me tell you, I was scared, <laughs> I, 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 but without even thinking, without even thinking, my brother showed me the authority that I have. It was like he was God and, and, and I'm me now, you know, like now. Like when I read something in the Word and I get excited about it, and oh man, I got authority. I can exercise authority in that area. And man, I, and I, just it was just like a sudden moment. And that's how quick it could be in the spirit realm too. God will just grab a hold of you and say, "Hey, you run to that lion. You run to that giant. You run to him. And you and don't worry about a thing. Don't worry how it's going to turn out." See, this is our problem. We always want to calculate things in our head. You know, I'm a, I'm a man. We always want to calculate things, you know. Hey, how's, it got, how's that going to work out? How's that scenario going to work? You know, even some women do that too. You know, oh, yeah, well, this. And that. What if we did this? Or oh, we'll move that over here. And then, no, no, it don't look good there. Move it over here. And I'm like, well, oh, wait a minute now. You know, and she's exercising her authority, and I'm getting my back sore from moving furniture. But... <laughs> 
But you know what I'm saying? God is good. You know, in that, in that split second, I found out that I got authority. And we started chasing them. They turned, they stopped, and they turned around, and we started chasing them. And then we were chasing them, and we jumped on top of them, and we threw them, and we took their faces, and we rubbed it in the snow. And that's what we got to do with the devil. We got to take their faces, rub it in the snow. That situation that's coming up in your body, that sickness in your body, rub it in the face of the devil. Tell them I refuse to fear. Amen. I refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to be fear. That's it. That's all he's got. He going to get you scared. Coronavirus, oh, oh, wear a mask, put three masks on, put five masks on. It ain't going to save you. I wore my mask. I got coronavirus, and I'm still alive. Amen. Now, now, I'm not making light of people that died. No, right? I have a brother that died. My brother died. But it was, he brought, died from a heart attack. But he had just come out of the hospital from COVID. And so they tried to blame it on COVID. I said, no, my brother had heart failure. He had heart failure. He died. His heart exploded. He had the, the widowmaker thing. You know, poof. He always had a bad heart. It was the third heart attack. He was, already on, he was already sowing bad seed in his life. He didn't want to eat right. He didn't want to exercise. You know, that Spanish food was just too good for him. You know, man. He liked his rice and beans, ajuichuela, you know, pateles, you know, the whole nine yards. You know, he just loved it. He just loved it, man. And I tell you, our culture does injustices to us sometimes. And so we have to use it. And that's another thing I'm gleaning from Pastor. You know, I'm in. The man is fit. And he's lean. You know, he's banging on that Bible. And I'm like, man, he's got strength in his. I said, man, I want to be like that when I'm 72. Man, I want to be just like him. Praise God. Anyway, praise God. Let's pray. I'm done. Father God, I thank you. Oh, Father, I just had fun. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for, for, for bringing the bringing the message, Lord, and, and just blessing us this evening, Lord. And Father, help it, let it help us get through the rest of the week, Father God, till we, can, till we get to Sunday, Lord, and, and get some more manna thereby to grow by. And Father God, that we would just exercise, help us to exercise our authority. Father God, that we would understand that that authority has been delegated to us already by the Holy Spirit. Father God, that's living in us and deeply, Father God, and we just have to we just got to get that revelation, Father God, that we got it. And Father, whatever situation that arises, Lord, Father, we thank you that we will not panic. We will not get in fear, Lord, but we would just trust in you, Lord. Trust in you and believe in you, Father God. And Father, we give you the glory for these people. Bless them as they go home. Protect them in their vehicles, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you.